let's have a look at a couple examples from section 1.2. Uh, so these are sections related to sets and some of the notation and terminology associated with sets. To begin with, uh, we've got this question here. Is A an element of the set containing A and B? So a question like this is really uh, just checking whether you understand the notation. Um, and the answer to this one is yes, A is an element of the set containing A and B. So that particular set has two elements. The elements are A and B. Here's another question. And what that says is A, a subset of the set containing A and B. Well, it's not a subset um, because the way that that's written, it doesn't have curly brackets around the A, um, which would, if it did have that, that would be a set and set roster notation. Here we simply just have that letter A, which is not a set. Sometimes you do see sets that are named with a letter, and in those cases, two things. One, generally, they would be a capital letter. Um, and the other thing is whenever you, you have a, a set that's given the name of a letter, the problem would specify that this is a set. Even if that had been the case, though, uh, this is not a subset of that set. Um, remember, to be a subset means that every element of the first set has to be an element of the second set. Okay? And there's no indication that that lowercase a is a set. All right, now we've sort of fixed this by putting those curly brackets I mentioned around it. And this says, is the set containing a a subset of the set containing a and b? And so here, going to the definition of subset, yes, every element of that set on the left is an element of that set on the right. So that makes it a subset. Okay, so yes, the set containing A is a subset of the set containing A and B. Last uh, question here before we go to a different kind of example. This is how many elements are in the set containing one, one, and the set containing one. Okay, this is a little bit tricky because of the notation. It looks a little strange, plus the fact that we have that one repeated. So one thing that's important to understand is if you see an element repeated when you're looking at set roster notation, the element still only counts as one element. Okay, um, so just because one is repeated, it doesn't make it another element the second time you see it. Um, the other thing to understand about this one is when you see the one at the end there within the curly brackets, that is different than one without the curly brackets. Okay, so there are two distinct elements there, and that's the answer. There are two elements, namely one and the set containing one. And here we have an example, and you see other examples like this in the section, where an element of a set could be a set itself. So, and that's what we see here. One of those elements is itself a set. All right, let's move on to an example. This is actually one of the exercises that appears in section 1.2, and it's about Cartesian products. So we're given these two sets, A and B, and we're asked to use set roster notation to write each of the following sets and include the number of elements that are in each set. Okay, so part A, we've got the Cartesian product of A and B in that order. So remember the Cartesian product consists of ordered pairs where the first coordinate is taken from the first set, second coordinate is taken from the second set, and you want all possibilities. Um, the 
each ordered pair, the order matters, the order that you have those eight ordered pairs in there is not important. Um, so we've got eight elements, and that's the eight of them. And uh, if you watched the previous video about this section, I emphasize that one mistake that sometimes students make around Cartesian products is, uh, is with notation. So remember the elements here are ordered pairs and should be written as ordered pairs. Okay, so for part B, they switch the order of A and B, and we're still going to get a Cartesian product with eight elements. There'll be a different eight elements because now in for each of the ordered pairs we had before, the order is reversed. Um, notice, by the way, this might have occurred to you as we looked at these first two. We started with one set with four elements and one set with two elements. And when we take the Cartesian product, we have eight elements. So when we take the Cartesian product of A with itself, perhaps it won't surprise you that we get 16 elements, four times four. Okay, that's exactly what we get. We get all possible ordered pairs where you take the first coordinate from A and you take the second coordinate from A, and it's okay if they're the same element. So we get things like WW or XX, YY, ZZ, as well as the other ones where they're not the same element from A. And then finally, they ask us for the Cartesian product of B with itself. Well, B only has two elements, and the Cartesian product of B with itself is then going to have four elements. Um, I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.